Okay, so have you ever looked at a massive DJ playing in a club? I'm in Vegas at the moment. This is a Mobile Beat conference that I'm at. I'm talking at the Mobile Beat show. Uh, have you ever seen a massive DJ out there? There's Tiesto, there is Calvin Harris in big lights uh, uh, across an awesome club. Have you ever been to one of their events or, and thought, I just can never get close to this. I can never get close to DJing like that. I can't create the magic that these guys or girls create. I don't know why I bother. Well, look, if you ever have thought that, let me give you three reasons why you really ought not think that way and you should cut yourself a bit of slack. So the three reasons why the life and times of these DJs here mean that they are going to play sets that to you seem magical but actually aren't are as such. Number one. You think that they're making it all up on the spot. They are not making it all up on the spot. They have practiced very, very hard. Quite often there's pyrotechnics going off that have to be at the right time. Their set has to be the same every night for that to work. And yes, some DJs will vary it up a bit, but believe me, even the ones who you think are varying it up every night completely, they're not. They're out on tour, they're playing the same tunes to a different crowd every night in a different city, or at least a different crowd every night, somewhere like this where people are on holiday. So. They don't have that pressure of changing it up all the time like a resident DJ might have where the crowd are the same every week, right? So they've got an advantage on you. They can practice very hard and then more or less stick to their guns. Uh, and so it's bound to sound very professional and it's bound to be choreographed because guess what? It is. So the second reason why what they do is going to appear magical to you but actually is once you know what's going on, kind of get it, is that they've got a lot of music you can't get. They've got their own tracks, of course. They've got re-edits of their own tracks that they've done. They've got re-edits of their friends' tracks that their friends have done or that they've done for their friends. They've got their friends' pre not yet released tracks. All these things you can't get. So they're going to sound more original than you could ever sound for that reason. But here's a good thing. You can join a record pool. You can join a download pool. DJ City, uh, BPM Supreme, promo only, that kind of people. And at least there you can get your hands on stuff that most people can't get their hands on. And that most people might think, oh, this DJ is good. They've got a version of that that I've not heard before or whatever. Acapellas, DJ tools, remixes and so on. So you can get a bit of that kind of buzz uh, in your DJ sets. But you're never going to get close to the, the, the top people. And that's why. Don't beat yourself up over it. But I think the biggest thing is point number three. The people in their crowds are very, very different to the people in your crowds in that they have come especially to hear them. These DJs don't have to read the crowds. All these DJs have to do is do what's expected of them. Play the tunes that you expect them to play. Play the sound that they're known for. And guess what? Everyone's going to have a great time. So this is something that you don't have the benefit of in your DJ sets. In your sets, you've got to win people over every night. They don't know what you're going to play particularly. All they want to do is to be entertained by you. So you're going to have to win them over. You're going to have to read the crowd. You're going to have to work it out. But there is an upside to this for you, not for the superstar DJs. They're pretty straight jacketed by what they're expected to play. They're being paid a lot of money to be themselves. But themselves can quite quickly become something that they'd rather develop a bit from. But they can't because they're expected to do what, what, what everyone thinks they're all about, right? So in your case... You know, when you get a dance floor eating out of your, the palm of your hand, you've had to do it the hard way. You've had to find out what they like, alter your set subtly, read the crowd, and then finally they're on your side. Whereas these people don't have the satisfaction of doing that. And if they, had, if they did deviate, if they did try and do something different, people would just scratch their heads. So, you know, take heart from that. The bottom line is, you don't know you're at the top of a mountain. Uh, until you get there and you might find the struggle hard but you know at some point you're going to say wow haven't I come a long way so if you are struggling if you are looking at the big DJs and thinking I'm never going to get close to them take heart carry on doing what you're doing enjoy your journey and you will get there I promise you so this has been our vlog uh, these vlogs especially uh, for people who are following along will know uh, for our complete DJ course which is coming very soon and we're kind of giving you some behind the scenes stuff every week it's been a couple of weeks since I made one I do apologize about that but I have been busy this is uh, your one. I'll try to do another one a little bit later in the week as well. And these kind of build into lots and lots of extra material and behind the, behind the scenes stuff uh, as we build up to launching the complete DJ course very soon. So meanwhile, if you've enjoyed this or you've got something to say, please like, share, follow, comment underneath, do all that stuff. And I'll see you again for another vlog in just a few days time. Until then, get good, get out there, make the moments.